identifying the issues that are critical to the welfare and vitality of rural communities. That's what the members of the Massachusetts Rural Policy Advisory Commission were brought together to do. The commission is out with a report that spells out those critical issues, issues that could have a big impact for many in this region. For the details, I spoke with commission members Judy Terry and Linda Dunlavy. Dunlavy is also executive director of the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. The Rural Policy Advisory Commission was created by the legislature in 2015, and we spent a few years trying to understand what was rural Massachusetts, what were the socioeconomics, what were the issues, and finally realized that um, there was no place where all of the information that we were learning and gathering and sharing was encapsulated, and there was no place where we had concentrated on rural economies and rural issues in Massachusetts. Which that's fascinating if you think about it because so much of Massachusetts is, is rural. rural. Yes. Wow. So when you learned that, what did you think? Um, well, I've worked in rural communities yes, for have. 25 years, so it wasn't totally surprising to me. What I found surprising is just what feels like layer after layer after layer of challenge and inequity. And when, when we created the plan and all of that was put together, that was kind of striking. That, mm. Because we've, we've worked on issues here and here and here and here, but what the plan does is put them all together and we say, wow. And we're gonna pull some of the threads of the plan in a minute, but I wanna bring Judy into the conversation. Judy, you're a member of the Rural Policy Advisory Commission, among many other, the planning board in Chesterfield, you've been working on environmental issues, you are just yes. versed in rural everything for quite some time now. But as a commission member, as you went sort of community to community to do the listening sessions involved, uh, that were involved in sort of the underbelly of the plan, what did you hear? Was there a common thread that you heard that stuck out to you or what stands out in your mind? I think the most common thing was that the people felt that for it, for now, they are now being listened to, that they have felt this for so long and now it was finally going to come to some perhaps results with the report. And the big fear, of course, uh, was that the report uh, would be put on someone's shelf and would the not be utilized. Every report, yeah. right? Yeah, yes, yes. And so for you two, is there a sense of, I know there were action items and things were prioritized in the report. Does that give you hope or comfort that this won't be a dusty old document somewhere? Oh, yes, indeed. It does to me because I find that our Western Mass legislators in particular are now looking at the plan and they are utilizing the plan. And we're seeing some of the things that are mentioned in the plan are most assuredly going to be taken care of or it's being spoken about. Right. And I think to me this is critical to us um, that it, it do, you know, it does get looked at uh, and 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 some fulfillment come from the plan itself. And the way the plan tackled that was looked sort of organized it into 15 different areas right. that bubbled to the top for rural communities. Broadband, no surprise that that <laughs> made the list. Yeah, yes. Chesterfield is one of those areas that's struggled with how to get broadband consistently to all residents. Is there a sense outside of Chesterfield and in other rural communities, we heard the governor in his state of the state address say, Broadband, it's going to happen. If it's not already fixed, there'll be a plan. But this has been an issue that has been a, a, long time. a long time coming. Do people really believe that it's going to happen? I think this time there really is a solution for all of the communities. And we are about two years away. Two, we feel so confident about that, that it was addressed in the plan, but wasn't a primary focus of the plan. It because we believe it will be taken care of. Mm. And so things like, how are we going to deal with lack of transit? How are we going to uh, increase population in the most rural areas? How are we going to deal with how old we're all getting in rural Massachusetts? Those really became the primary topics that we looked at. Yeah. 
so if, let's take that population issue. We know that age friendly is something that a lot of rural communities are looking at now because of the fact that many of the rural communities have a more aging population than maybe some of the urban areas that have colleges and younger people. And in the report, it looked at reversing that trend. I was surprised why that angle in particular. Well, that here's the striking statistic that we give all the time. Population projections for Massachusetts to 2040 show that without considering anything related to climate change, Cape Cod will decline in population by 18.5%. Franklin County and Berkshire County by around 2.5%. But Boston is supposed to increase in population by 31.6%. And so how do we as a commonwealth really deal with that kind of growth and decline in across Massachusetts? It's a dynamic that really isn't sustainable for Massachusetts. And so that's really one of the tenets of our plan is how are we going to have economic development and prosperity for all of Massachusetts so that we're spreading carefully and with planning the population and the young people across Massachusetts. And it's just an idea that needs to continue to be looked at and addressed is basically how the plan rolls it out, right? right. Puts it there on the table and says something that needs to be addressed right. moving forward. Yes, and I, I see the plan even doing a little bit more than that in that right now there is um, a great deal of attention being put on um, the circumstances that Linda just talked about with Boston and with um, the people, the population in Boston, uh, transportation. You just had a segment on that not too long ago with uh, the b real big issue, and that's one of Linda's favorite ones about this transportation. Um, but I, I think that uh, what is happening here is the people in Western Mass are becoming concerned that they do not want everyone from Boston moving out to Western Mass, and um, they, there has not been a movement for protecting what is already here in Western Mass. And I think that is one of the concerns, and I don't think that those concerns are something that people should be concerned with. I think that uh, we need to look as an entirety across the Commonwealth as to what is going to happen. And, and I think that the, the plan certainly reflects that uh, for the future. Mm -hmm. And I think that people may get a little ahead of themselves in saying, uh, we really do not want this. Not uh, my or, backyard. That is correct. Yeah, Linda, actually, I wanted to bring up something you mentioned a moment ago, though, climate change. When we hear climate change, we think, oh, Boston, how much will be underwater? But in terms of rural impact of climate change, is there one that we're seeing now or one that people are particularly concerned about? Well, we have had serious problems with our agriculture from severe drought to severe flooding and how do we deal with what crops we grow, et cetera. But also look at what happened with Tropical Storm Irene that hit Vermont so hard and then slammed into Franklin County where our culverts weren't sized correctly. We weren't ready to deal with a storm of that size. It washed out Route 2, Route 2. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that we recognize that uh, rural Massachusetts can help with climate resiliency. We can look at the carbon sequestration value of our forest land, but we also have to plan thoughtfully. How are we going to keep our economy strong, our agriculture strong, our infrastructure intact? And so balancing all of that is what we try to tackle in the plan. Just briefly, next step for you each regarding this plan. Um, next week we go to the State House and uh, legislation has been filed to create an Office of Rural Policy. We believe that that really is the way to have sustained and practical focus on rural issues and making rural Massachusetts a strong contributor to Mass the Massachusetts economy. So that's my next step.